need a rest. Not to be arrested. People 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 need a rest. Not to be arrested. Why don't you get out of here? I don't see you staying here. Why don't you go give us some peace? Thank you for coming out tonight. My name is Megan and I am here as a representative from the Boulder County Democratic Socialists of America, DSA. But more so, I am here as a neighbor, as a community member. I am here, we are here, because it is past time somebody spoke up about the dangerous and inhumane practices of the Boulder, of the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless. As you may know, we are coming up on the one year anniversary of Benjamin Harvey's completely preventable death. Benjamin Harvey was a longtime Boulder resident who after going through coordinated entry and being referred to our shelter was turned away by shelter staff. The reason? Nine months earlier, he had tapped on a window after arriving one minute late for the mail pickup time rather than showing empathy or respect for a fellow human being experiencing a moment of frustration and human weakness, the shelter staff declared him violent and banned him from services for a whole year. The night he returned to the shelter, they reminded him of this small mistake and sent him away. He died that night, following the city's camping ban law that forbids people but not dogs from coverings like a blanket. He froze to death. There was a public outcry after Benji's death, which led the Boulder City Council to recommend that the shelter make a number of policy changes that might protect residents from such a fate in the future. These protections would have given residents the right to challenge shelter suspensions and bans through a process of binding third-party arbitration. The shelter and Greg Harms refused. In fact, a whole year has passed and the shelter has made no substantive changes. In the meantime, we, allies and advocates for the people experiencing homelessness in our community, have been asked for help. Shelter residents fear speaking up because even small infractions like a disrespectful tone can lead to severe punishment. Our neighbors experiencing homelessness have come to us with stories that people are still being subjected to arbitrary and inconsistent rules. That people are still being kicked out for minor offenses with no warning. That residents live in fear of misstepping around a cranky staff member lest they be turned out onto the cold streets. And so tonight we are back. We are back to be a voice for the voiceless. We are back with a letter of demands for Greg Harms. We are back with the strength of more than a dozen community organizations, and we are back with the pledge of support from nearly 300 community members. More every day. We are back to demand justice and to hold Greg Harms accountable. Thank you. Yeah. If you're lucky, you get to be one of the 160 or less people a night to stay at the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless. You'd be lucky because in the last year, 2,500 people have sought help, leaving most from getting a bed, a caseworker, a chance to overcome what left them homeless. Even if you are one of the lucky 160, the shelter mandates that clients be respectful. 
This is an incredibly vague term and often simply responding to staff in any manner beside full and immediate compliance is considered disrespectful. In the 2018 University of Denver Law School report on homelessness in the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless, excuse me, for the homeless, Executive Director Greg Harms was interviewed and shared that any staff member can issue a violation to an individual for breaking this contract. When exited, that individual is told to leave the property for a period of time and can even be permanently banned. Harms further shared that the shelter provides the staff no guidelines with regard to punishment length or type when there is a rule violation. To put this in perspective, for failing a vague demand from shelter staff to respect my authority, the same staff, given no guidelines on punishment, can kick you out for a day, a week, a year. Should you find either the alleged infraction or the punishment unwarranted, tough luck, you can file a grievance. But guess who reviews such complaints? Shelter management. I've helped someone try this process, and I can tell you it's a sham. Just like the police policing the police, shelter management has always stood up for the shelter staff from the numerous stories people have shared with me. Yep. This was enough for the Boulder City Council to request the shelter submit to an independent review when people are kicked out the wish for such a process. If this were a government service, it would be required by due process. But Greg Harms has refused. Instead, another sham process was put in place. People kicked out can request, if they know about it, a problem unto itself, they can request mediation. But the manager of the mediation service told the Boulder Human Relations Commission that since Benjamin Harvey's death nearly a year ago, they've only spoken with four people who had received suspensions. Guess how many times anyone from the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless has shown up to any of these discussions with a mediator? That would be zero, nada, nilch. The sham process of even non-binding mediation doesn't exist. Another thing the Boulder City Council asked for was that anyone kicked out receive an offer of transportation so they can be safe for the night. This too was a bridge too far for Greg Harms and company at the shelter. One person I know showed up at the shelter in the evening only to be told they were kicked out for receiving too many warnings. No ride was offered. The shelter put that person's life at risk, failing to take even a low cost and humane step to ensure an easily achievable modicum of safety. I'll end with the warning system. It's another sham process. People staying at the shelter often have no idea they have reached the three or four warning count that gets them kicked out. Shelter staff doesn't tell people when they receive a warning, and at least in some, but maybe all cases, they wait until the person comes from across town to get their bed to tell them they can't stay because too many warnings have been issued. Issued, but no notice given. So people staying here have no idea what they did wrong. They just know they have to leave the property, and no transportation is offered. Did you walk five miles to get here? Too bad. Could we have told you in the morning when you left not to bother coming back? Yes, but we don't. Could we buy you a bus ticket to help you seek safety? We could, but we don't. Could we let an independent reviewer decide whether the warnings were legitimate rather than arbitrary and capricious? We could, but we don't. The shelter is here to help people at the end of their rope, not teach them a lesson. It's time the yeah. she Boulder Shelter learned that lesson. Yeah. Greg Harms, step up, do the right thing, and implement our demands. Yeah. Woo! Boulder Revised Code 6-1-7 requires every pet to have shelter. But under Boulder Revised Code 5-6-10, the camping ban, humans are restricted from shelter of any sort down to a blanket. In Boulder, rich Boulder, our homeless neighbors are treated worse than dogs. If you're homeless in our city and you can't get into this shelter, the law says too bad, go freeze. And that's exactly what happened to Benjamin Harvey on Christmas Day when he froze to death on a 10 degree night.
That was a direct consequence of Boulder City Law. It was a legal death by exposure in our city. Last September, in Martin versus the City of Boise, Idaho, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that a shelter is not accessible or adequate. It is cruel and unusual punishment under the Eighth Amendment to penalize people for seeking said shelter themselves. And that is exactly what the City of Boulder does by ticket ticketing folks and jailing folks for the crime of using a blanket under its camping ban, even when they can't access the shelter. The exact pair of circumstances the court ruled was unconstitutional. The University of Denver Stroom College of Law reported that in Boulder, camping ordinance citations are given to people experiencing homelessness at a rate 500 times higher than housed individuals. You want more? Homeless members of our community face excessive scrutiny from laws like this smoke, like uh, smoking tickets, which they receive at a ratio of 300 to 1 compared to housed persons. There is a pattern. The city of Boulder policy is clear. No more homeless people. Lock them up, bust them out, let them freeze as long as they disappear. City policy will only change when us residents say no more, when we force them. No more deaths in our streets. Yeah. 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 And this is our open letter to Greg Harms, Executive Director of the Shelter. Can I hold this for you? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I can hold that. All right. Maybe. <laughs> Mr. Harms. Last Christmas, in the early hours of the morning, a man named Benjamin Harvey was found dead in Boulder near the University of Colorado. Facing a year-long ban from the homeless shelter, Harvey froze outside in 10-degree weather without a blanket or a sleeping bag due to the city's inhumane ban on urban camping. Despite the fact that Boulder Shelter for the Homeless employees referred Harvey to your shelter through the Coordinated Entry Program, his one-year suspension from the facility still prevented him from accessing a bed for the night. An infraction of shelter rules should never be a death sentence. Yeah. Under your leadership, people experiencing homelessness are subject to the arbitrary and capricious enforcement of shelter rules, often resulting in expulsion from the shelter on unreasonably short notice, with insufficient warnings and no offer of transportation, even though City Council created a requirement for transport to other services in the event of a suspension. With winter approaching, we fear that these policies will lead to even more deaths. Resident efforts to draw attention to the inconsistency, favoritism, and disturbing lack of transparency in staff decision-making are met with further punishment. So they are faced with two choices, obey shelter authorities unconditionally or risk being sent out into the streets. Not only that, but your facility is run without public oversight, despite receiving one-third of its funding from public sources. All of this amounts to an alarming lack of accountability for shelter staff, especially considering that they wield power over their residents' access to warmth, food, and a place to rest. It is clear that something must change. In order to prevent future tragedies and injustices in our community, we demand binding third-party arbitration for resident grievances. Yeah. Since yeah. Benjamin Harvey's death, the shelter has utilized the city's community mediation services to handle disputes, but only in a non-binding capacity. Given the grave consequences posed by unfair suspensions from the facility, this is not enough. Allowing community mediation services to make binding decisions would ensure that conflicts are resolved more fairly, and we hope that it would amplify the voices of Boulder's most disadvantaged citizens. We also demand that all active suspensions be re-evaluated by a third party, and that suspended individuals referred to the shelter through the coordinated entry system be allowed back. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Only those with the highest need are referred to the Boulder Homeless Shelter, but those facing prior bans are blocked from receiving the care they need. Those who are banned must sleep on the streets, sometimes in dangerously low temperatures. The severe weather shelter opens stores in freezing temperatures or snow, but many still face obstacles, such as transportation. The risk of unfair suspensions is just too great, and those decisions should be reassessed. So who has the current temperature? 31 degrees. <laughs> Finally, 
Finally, it is important that residents at your shelter are represented by people who truly empathize with their position and understand the struggles they face. Therefore, we demand that individuals who are currently or formerly homeless be given a place on the shelter's board of directors. Yeah. 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 No one better understands the needs of people experiencing poverty and homelessness than those who have dealt with it firsthand. It is necessary that those individuals are given a say in how the shelter is run. The people of Boulder refuse to stand by while the, city, while the city's most vulnerable are denied their basic right to shelter, putting their health, safety, and lives at risk. We refuse to believe that people experiencing homelessness forfeit this human right by failing to act with perfect compliance and obedience towards authority. In a society that punishes poverty and criminalizes homelessness, the very least we can do is ensure that disadvantaged people are treated with fairness and dignity within the very structures designed to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually have a list of all the organizations who signed on. On my phone. Sorry, I got it. But I just realized that would be hard to read. Sincerely. <laughs> Boulder and Broomfield County Democratic Socialists of America, Boulder Rights Watch, Boulder ISO, Denver Homeless Out Loud, Surge Boulder, NAACP's Boulder Branch. DU's National Lawyers Guild, Fem Left, CU Boulder's Committee on Rights and Compensation, the Rocky Mountain Peace and Justice Center, uh, the Front Range Mutual Aid Network, and the over 280 concerned individuals who signed our online petition. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So now we are going to give the letter to, attempt to give the letter to Greg Harms. Let's do it. Do you have another copy or are we going to? Yeah, I'll use that one. Okay. So it's another different one. Oh. Okay. Hi. Alright. All of us? Okay. Yeah. If you, if you don't okay. want to, we're just going to go up to that door. So, here's the letter. Yeah. We can tell them that it doesn't have every name, that it has, the list has been growing and growing. Mm -hmm. What can I hold? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then do we want this or no? They seem to, we seem to have their attention. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> cool. Sure. Is Greg Harms here? So we've been asked to, to take the letters on his behalf. Um, is, is Greg this, Harms here? Is, he, he communicated with the person that communicated with him. But he would not be here tonight. We've been asked to take the letters, so that's what we're so, doing. And what are you doing with the letter from here? We will so we deliver it to, to, to Mr. Holmes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. People need a rest. Not, not to be arrested. People need a rest. 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 Not to be arrested. Beds not body bags. 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 Beds not body bags.
from here we keep pushing. We're gonna let, uh, we're gonna meet with Greg Harms, we're gonna let him know he has till January to uh, commit to enacting these changes. And if he doesn't, uh, he'll regret that. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a threat. That's just, it's a non-violent promise. Well.